turn your cell phone off. Hey everybody, good evening. Welcome to another episode of Faith Formation's Pray Date. And uh, God is good. All, All the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. Boy. All right. So tonight we're going to do a meditation, a prayer meditation. And it, it involves the imagination. We use our imagination just as with the Gospels. Uh, walking with Jesus for the last three years of his life, we're invited to use our imagination as we walk with Jesus. So tonight, with the Stations of the Cross, that's the, the prayer uh, practice we're going to do. We're invited to use our imaginations as we walk with Jesus for the last three hours of his life. Now, just a word of caution. As we use our imaginations, walking with Jesus those last three hours, it'll take us very close to the unimaginable torture that he suffered but but we are invited to go there not because there is value in seeing torture that doesn't make sense but we go there because there's value in seeing great love in action that's what jesus walking up calvary that was that's what it was about three hours on the cross that's what it was about so it's the Stations of the Cross are an exercise that not meant to glorify torture. They're an exercise that honor the power of love in action. So join us now. We're going to, um, from that soft place in your heart, go there, be there with Jesus as we walk the Stations of the Cross. Thanks for tuning in. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. There you stand before the crowd after being beaten. You never deny yourself, yet humbly accept the punishment given to you by those who had witnessed your miracles. It's easy to look at this scene now and think, how could they have accused you and condemned you to death? All you did was love every person you met. Yet, they are not alone in your condemnation of you. How often do I ignore you at school in the person no one wants to talk to? How often do my words condemn you in the way that I speak about others? It is not only the Jews and Punctious Pilate who condemned you, but I stand next to them shouting just as loud, crucify him. Jesus, forgive me for the ways in which I condemn and pierce others with my words and actions. Help me to love like you and to learn from your example. The second station, Jesus carries the cross. By now you have endured a sleepless night, betrayal by your friends, and a beating that is too horrible to fully imagine. You've been whipped, stripped, and spit on by countless faces, some of whom last week treated you as royalty as you entered the city. And now they hand you a cross to carry. The weight of it is far more than any number of pounds we can figure. For in carrying the cross, you carry the weight of our sins. How often do I forget that you have carried the load for me? How often do I try to carry things on my own, not allowing you to help me? It was not only the sins of the world that you carried. It was my, own, it was my sin, my selfishness, my pride, my anger. Each added more weight to the load, and it was not only my sin you carried, but also my burdens, my worries, my fears, my sadness, my insecurities. <clears throat> Each you carried step by step towards Golgotha, the place of the skull. Jesus, help me not to forget the load that you carried for me. Give me the strength and the courage to let go of those things that separate me from you. 
The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. As you walk through the narrow streets, every movement, every jolt burns and reopens your wounds. The pain along with the weight of the cross becomes too much and you fall. In boxing, when a fighter falls and is too beaten to continue, the fight is stopped by the referee. Yet there is no one there to stop the battle that you fight for us. Even though you know what still lies ahead, you do not stop and somehow find the strength to continue. How many times have I fallen in my walk? Too many to count, I'm sure. So many times when I fall, I don't feel like getting back up and trying again. There are too many temptations that I'm faced with that feel too fun and easy to do because so many around me are doing them. Jesus, help me to remember your courage and your perseverance when you fell. Give me the courage to get back up when I fall. Help me remember what it is worth, that it is worth it to live as you lived. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. Amid all the shouts and jeers from the crowd that move like a wave in your mind, as you struggle to remain conscious, one voice stands out. At first it is so faint that you wonder if it is real, but then as your eyes meet and you see her face, you are not surprised that she is there for you. She has always been there for you. Her yes to the Father has been a light in the darkness. And now, here in your darkest hour, she is there. There are so many times when I feel alone in my struggles. It seems that no one understands what I'm going through, especially my parents, but I realize they must. How many times have I hidden things from my parents out of fear of what they would say or what trouble I would be in when all they want to do is love me? Jesus, help me to remember that I am never alone in my struggles. Help me to see my parents as you saw yours. Help me to know their love for me when things are hard between us. Help me to remember the light of your mother in my life. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. The soldiers who had beaten you all day had what appeared to be a moment of compassion. Yet instead, their selfish moves motivates, overrides their opportunity for charity. They only want to follow their orders and to get you up to the place where you will be crucified. How beaten you look that they decide to grab Simon, a Cyrene, out of the crowd to help you carry the cross. He follows behind you, walking in your steps, helping you move forward. You press on, knowing that the worst is yet to come. How often do I pass an opportunity to help someone in need? Do I let what others may think of me stop from reaching out? Jesus, open my ears to hear the ways that you call me to serve. Help me follow Simon's example of helping others. Help me to know what it means to be a true and faithful servant. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. By now the thorns cut so deeply into your head that even seeing where you should step next is almost impossible. Up to this point, all who approach you, other than your mother, either shout at you or spit in your face. As Veronica approaches, she walks differently than the others. As she reaches out her hands and wipes your face with her cloth, Suddenly, her face of compassion becomes clear. No words are necessary. Both of your eyes say it all. For in that moment, your dignity as a man is restored. How many times have I forgotten that each person is made in your image and likeness and therefore deserves my respect? Do I make others objects of my pleasure and ignore their humanity? Veronica courageously stepped forward and dared to treat you differently than everyone else. Could I do the same? Jesus, help me see your presence in others. 
Give me the courage to follow Veronica's example of treating others with love, even when no one else does. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. The soldiers are enraged at you for falling this time. They can't understand how Simon's help is not enough. In their anger, they hit you again and again before they remember that you have to be alive to be crucified. The beating stops, but the shouts and taunts become louder and harsher. At this moment, you can stop this. You are the Messiah and have the power to reveal yourself to everyone there. But you know that it would not fulfill all that is written about you. You know that you must be faithful to all of the Father's promises to his people. Remembering your love and your faithfulness, you get up. And now, with your wounds full of dirt and each step embedding it deeper, you keep going. How many times have I failed to follow through on my promises? Or worse yet, how often have I lied even to the people I care about? Do you remember your faithfulness even when I fail? Jesus, help me to believe in your faithfulness and love for me. Give me the grace to follow through on my word to others. Help me to be a person of integrity. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. Their wailing sounds like a funeral. They cry and weep as if you are already dead. While air still passes through your lungs and your heart still beats, to them you are dead. They know you are on your way to be crucified, and because of the beating you have endured, you already look like you should not be breathing at all. Yet in this moment consumed by death, you speak words of life and say, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Do I listen to your words in my life? How often have the things I've watched or listened led me away from you? Have I allowed the gospel of life to reign in my heart? Jesus, help me to listen to your words of life. Show me ways that I can put you first. The ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. Again you fall, this time from sheer exhaustion. Only, will, only your will presses you forward, while your body refuses. How difficult it must be for you, fully God and fully man. God knows that this has, been, has to be finished and that this is not yet complete. Man feels the excruciating pain, and every bone in your body wants to stop right here and move no further. Somehow, both join together, and you muster strength to get up. You vow not to fall again, because now you can see the place they are leading you to. You know the end is close, and so you press on. How many times have I let my flesh win over my spirit? How often have I chosen to sin rather to, than to follow your way? Was it my sin that became too heavy that you fell this third time? Jesus, help me to follow your ways. Help me to remember your victory over sin. Give me the grace to recognize when I sin and desire to sin no more. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. In some ways, to get to this point is a relief because you know this is almost over. In other ways, it is terrifying because you know the worst pain possible for man to endure is still waiting for you. By now, your bloodied cuts have dried into your garments. Because of this, they act as a layer of skin for you, since so little of, your, of you remains. As the soldiers strip, you bear, it as, you bear it is not the nakedness that is painful, but rather the vicious tearing of your skin. The cuts that had closed now reopen, and once again, a river of blood runs all over your body. You are stripped of your dignity as a man, 
for even animals are given a swifter, less painful death. How often have I judged others by the way they look or what they are wearing? Do I find my own self-worth and self-identity by the clothes I wear or the way I look? Jesus, help me to look past the outside of others. Help me not to judge them by how they look or what they wear. Help me to find my self-worth and identity in you. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. Lying down on wood is not foreign to you. The first place you were laid when you came into this world was a wooden major. There you were laid in love, and now it is out of love that you lay here on this wooden cross. The soldiers pull your right arm out beside you, and then horrific pain flows through your entire body. The nail pierces not only your hand, but also your whole body. The soldier pounds it in, only stopping to wipe your blood off his own face. Again, the nail is driven into your other hand, and the pain jolts your entire body. Pain shoots up your legs as they nail your feet. In reflection, I am angered by the soldiers. I can't understand why they are doing this to you, and yet what is hardest to realize is that not only am I in the crowd watching all of this, but I'm also one of them nailing you to the cross. How many times has my sin become a strike of the nail into your body? How often do I turn away from your mercy? Jesus, I'm sorry for nailing you to the cross with my own sin. Help me seek your forgiveness and mercy for the times that I sin. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. Above your head is the inscription, King of the Jews. As you use every last ounce of life left in you to lift your body so that you can speak, you do not look the part. Yet every word out of your mouth is one of love truly from another kingdom. The faces of all humanity must flash before your eyes as one by one you recount whom you are doing this for. And finally you say, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It is finished. You breathe your last and it looks as though this is the end. Jesus, Help me never forget your love for me. Help me to know that you died for me. Fill me with comfort in knowing that I never suffer anything that you don't understand. The 13th station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. The first arms that held you in this world are also the last. Your mother was told a sword would pierce your, her heart the day she presented you as an infant to the Father. Now she holds your body that is mangled beyond recognition. She sees not only the man she knows now, but also the child she held, and her heart is pierced. Your comfort to her will, be, will come but at this moment, she only has the Father to be with in the sorrow and pain. All hope seems gone. How many times have I lost hope in you? How often have I doubted your ability to be God in my life over all things? Jesus, help me to trust in you. Help me to place all of my hope in you and give me peace in knowing that you are the Lord over all things. The 14th station, Jesus is placed in the tomb. You are laid to rest by Joseph of Arimathea, Mary Magdalene, Mary your mother, and a few other women. As your body is anointed, Mary Magdalene remembers your eyes penetrating her heart. Tears stream down her face along with the others there as they too remember your love. 
They wrap your body in clean linens and lay it in a new tomb. The stone is rolled over the entrance, and now it is surely the end. Up to this point, death is final. While those you have lived with, laughed with, and cried with are in their heightened sorrow, believing that all is over, you are conquering sin and death. How many times has death felt like the end? When I've lost a loved one, it can be so hard to remember your victory. How often do I miss the opportunities to say I love you to those special people in my life? Do my family and friends know how I feel about them? Jesus, help me always remember that death is not the end. Give me the strength to say the words I love you to those people in my life that I do love. Help me to love every person, not just in words, but also with my actions. Jesus, I love you, I need you, and I trust you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening to reflect on the journey of Jesus. And we got the opportunity to look at tonight the images from our historic church, and we feel like you're here right with us. Uh, we miss you, um, and we hope that you have an amazing Holy Week, um, understanding the love and the power of this week. Please visit the website to see when masses are available and being streamed. And we hope that you'll join us for the rosary. The Faith Formation team will be doing the rosary on Friday at 2.45 on Facebook Live, just like tonight. Thanks, and have a wonderful Holy Week.